Dr. Yates in Chicago with uh, another video and I just want you to meet one of my patients but before I, I show you his face I want to show you his picture. Can we just go to the picture right here? Uh, this is a patient of mine, Luke. This is what he looked like a year ago and if we can come as close as we can in you can see he had kind of thinning in the middle here. He had a previous transplant with very thick plugs in the corners trying to close those corners. So what we had to do actually was remove the hair that was placed in these corners and start again basically. And he had a strip before so we put hair in the back and it looks beautiful. Just take my word for it. So now let's take a look at Luke. Okay. So you can see that Luke's hair is good combable hair all through here. We did approximately almost 2,000 grafts up to this frontal zone. You can see how natural the hairline is. You can see the area where he had these previous hairs placed. You know, a lot of when guys come in, they say, hey, I want a hairline like this. When I was in uh, high school, my hairline was like this. And you can see that's fine, but, you know, in high school, everybody had a 29 waist, and now no one's waist is a 29. It's at least a 32. So as you get older, things change. The geometry of the hairline changes. So this is a beautiful hairline. You know, and you can see this side here, how wavy and how this hair comes back. What we're going to do today, you can always do more density. We're going to put more density in these corners and just keep working on this front, keep strengthening the hairline just to make it the best that we can be. So, Luke, what do you think? It's been over a year now. Do you think that, you know, we've done all FUE, it wasn't that scar thing like you had before. I mean, do you think what we've done has helped you, have we hurt you? Um, with uh, my overall experience with Dr. Yates is, uh, has been more than stellar. Um, it's, it's pretty much night and day with what he did. Uh, I mean the other with, procedure. What I did compared to the other procedure, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's night and day. Yeah, right. I mean I, I never was able to um, style my hair um, like how I can now before I go out uh, until Dr. Yates did this procedure. So. Um, it's, it's more than satisfactory and um, I'd be definitely willing to come back to him for more if I need it. As he is, because today he is getting more. So, you know, I just wanted to show what kind of natural results we have. He has so much donor. A hair transplant is based on supply and demand. The supply is here, the demand is everywhere else. But what people must realize is you have to manage the supply. You just, in my mind, you just can't take a knife and cut through it leave a big scar and have some hair up here and call that okay. You know, that's, that's just not how it works. You know, the other thing I was going to say, today on my way to work, I went to Starbucks. Do you ever go to Starbucks? I, I'm not a coffee drinker. Okay. No. <laughs> I went to Starbucks and there has to be a new rule about how long it, somebody should be permitted to put the cream and that sugar in the coffee. You know, some people, there's a long line, everybody's getting their coffee. Today, somebody took, I think it was two people, took two minutes each to do their coffee like they were in their kitchen. I think there needs to be a rule for that. So you don't understand that. Like when people are waiting in line, you know, but what I thought of the next time I'm going to make a YouTube video at Starbucks and show the average time it should take to make your coffee. I think the average time, I think more than 15 seconds, you're getting obnoxious. So I, ha I know this has nothing to do with hair, but it was on my mind. Luke, you look great. You know, we'll, we'll do another one in six months to a year and we thicken this up. We put hair in his scar too. You know, uh, if you can turn around, uh, we, maybe we'll come behind you here. But he had a big scar back here that was just really big, as they say. And we put hair all through his scar. So he can wear his hair short now. So it never makes sense to me when I hear people say, well, I'm going to have a strip procedure to get the most hair and then I'll put FUE in my scar. Why would you get a scar anyway? You know, because nobody knows what quality scar you're going to get. You can get a tiny scar, you can get a big scar. But scar is not a word, it's not like in the English language, a word that means beautiful. So why would you even get a scar? It makes no sense to me. So this is Dr. Yates, come see us in Chicago. Thank you.